Cat Synth TV. Hey everybody, Cat Synth TV, and today I'm excited to present Myth, the new flagship instrument from Dawson, released by Traction. Like many other of Dawson's instruments, Myth has a beautiful and unique user interface. It's dominated by two oscillators and their radial elements known as irises. Each iris represents a resynthesized model of a sample. There are several graphical controls for manipulating that model. Below the irises, we have this area with panels representing each of the major elements in the signal flow. The oscillators, filter section, two effects buses, and modulators. On the right side, we see several modulation options that are currently active in this preset. You can always add more. On the left side, we see the main MIDI options. There is the main setup, as well as what are called the expression modulation sources. Now one of the important things to do when you set up this instrument is select a MIDI configuration. For example, I can set it up for use with a Seaboard. But I will instead use one of the default MIDI setups that maps Expression 1 to Velocity, Expression 2 to Mod Wheel, and Expression 3 to our foot controller. And these of course can be mapped to any parameters in the preset. And with that, let's take a listen to the preset we have open right now. All right, let's initialize. And now let's take a look at some of the features in more detail, starting with oscillator one and the iris. The iris represents the resynthesis of a sample, or its decomposition into groups of frequency partials that change over time. There's a large library of built-in samples to choose from. Let's try this one. And when you select it, you will see Myth resynthesize it on the fly and assign it to the iris. We can use this control to move through the resynthesized sound as we play it. Now of course we are just sweeping through the sound manually. There is also this control down here that does essentially the same thing. We can use this to automate moving through positions on the iris. Simply right click on it and select Create and Use New LFO. This puts a new LFO in the modulators area and you can see that it's set to a ramp pattern and already assigned to the position control. So now if we play, we will sweep through the entire sound. We can go faster if we want. Now notice that we have this sort of gap at the end of the sound. We can restrict the range of the LFO to avoid reaching the gap. So yeah, the sound is a little smoother now. So yes, as you noticed, we can pretty much freely edit LFO shapes. Let's edit a few more points here that make the iris position move in different directions. There are also several preset LFO patterns. Let's try the sine wave. A 
pull the top end down a bit. Now let's try a few other samples. Blurred guitar. Dum de dum. Now this one is a bit more colorful than the last one. The colors represent what are called layers, or different groupings, of harmonic patterns within the overall resynthesized sound. You get the full resynthesis by blending all the layers together, but you can listen to the layers separately using this half circle control over here. Bring more layers in. Go to the other extreme. Keep it centered to hear all the layers. Now, of course, we can modulate this layer control. Let's create another LFO. Use a sine wave but we'll set it to unipolar so it stays on one side of the control value. Do a little bit more editing of the shape. You can hear that we're now getting an even more dynamic timbre. Now notice that we are getting some sharp changes, especially at the beginning and end of the resynthesis. We can use this smooth transform to kind of smooth that out a little bit. You can see that the iris gets a little blurry, and the sound will be a little smoother. Go back and adjust LFO 1. Okay, turn that one off, and now let's look at a few more of the transformers here. This one animates the sound, with large values leading to some detuning. These three allow you to do FM synthesis with the iris sound. Rather than exposing operators, carriers, and modulators directly, these provide intuitive controls for amount, brightness, and inharmonicity. Once again, we can modulate these. I'm going to turn this one down and go over here to assign expression 2 or my mod wheel to control FM amount.
There are even more transformers here. These ones shape the harmonic spectrum of the resynthesized sound. This one makes the sound more sawtooth-like. This one changes the phases of the partials to get a more string-like sound. This one makes the sound more like a brass instrument. Now this isn't like creating a trumpet model or anything. It just shapes the spectrum of the synthesized sound to have a shape characteristic of a brass instrument. This next one makes the sound more like a square wave, so focusing mostly on odd harmonics. This one will give us something akin to classic analog oscillator sync. And then we have this one, which adds a little dirt and noise to the sound. Let's take the string transformer and modulate it with pressure or aftertouch. Initialize again. Let's pick one of the samples that I liked. Create the LFO again. Smooth it out a bit. Now we've already seen how we can create rich, evolving sounds with the iris and the transformers, but we can augment the oscillator in even more ways. Bring up the Oscillator 1 panel down here, and we can start to add what are called modules that further modify the sound. You can think of these as being like effects pedals. There are various types of modulation, filters, and effects. Let's try some amplitude modulation. We can modulate this ratio parameter with another LFO. Let's make it really slow and assign it to the ratio parameter. Let's try one of the filters. We have a vowel filter here with controls for vowel sound, formant character, and level.
Let's modulate the vowel selection with our expression pedal, sort of a wah-wah pedal on acid. Let's add on this J6 or Juno 6 chorus. Now there's an interesting transformer here called Route. We can use this to mix the signals from the preceding modules here with the sound coming directly from the main resynthesis oscillator. If we turn this gain all the way down, we will just hear the iris. Now one cool thing we can do is modulate this mix using the mod wheel. Set this halfway, and set the mod wheel halfway in the negative direction. Meanwhile, set the gain here to zero, and modulate it with the mod wheel halfway in the positive direction. Now we can smoothly blend the wet and dry in an expressive manner. Now, of course, we can change the order of the modules. For example, we can put the Juno Chorus after the Route module so that it affects both the dry iris signal and the signal coming from the other modules. That's a really interesting sound. Now, of course, with so many degrees of freedom, it can get a bit bewildering. And keep in mind that we've only so far used one oscillator section. Now, before I continue, please support this channel so that we may bring you more synthesizer tutorials and other cultural content regularly. Links to our merch store, including t-shirts and drinkware, as well as our Patreon and Ko-Fi, are in the description below. You can also support us with a super thanks, right here on YouTube. Okay, let's reinitialize again. Resynthesize this didgeridoo sample on Iris 1. And let's bring in Iris 2. Turn it on here, and select another sample. and create another LFO to sweep its position independently. Switch this LFO to a sine wave and adjust it a bit. And let's modify LFO1 as well.
Nice. Let's apply some of the transformers to both irises. This one is called Pure and retains the strongest harmonics while removing the weakest. Let's add a bit more of the brass, string, and square transformers. Pretty cool. Now, of course, we can also add modules to both oscillators. Go to Oscillator 1's panel, add the J60 chorus, and a comb filter. Now add some modules to oscillator 2. A ring modulator. By keeping the ratio close to unity with a small amount of flux, we can get some interesting beating patterns. Add a little smoothing on oscillator 2. Fade controls the balance between the two oscillators. Let's use the mod wheel to control the fade. Okay, now let's take a look at the filter section. But wait a minute, didn't we already add filters directly to the oscillator sections? Well, yes we did. So why do we need a separate filter section? For that, let's take a look at the overall signal path of MYTH. Each of the iris and oscillator sections feed into the filter section. So here we can put filters and other modules that affect both oscillators together rather than individually. Together, the oscillator and filter sections form a voice. All the voices are then summed together and sent to the effects sections, which we will look at shortly. Now back to the filter section. Okay, let's add this K35 filter, which models the infamous filter of the Korg MS-20. It has parameters for cutoff, resonance, drive, and keyboard tracking. Let's assign the expression pedal to cut off. We can add a more traditional resonant low-pass filter. Let's add an envelope to control its cutoff. 
Now the filter section can be used for more than just filters. Let's add the sweep modulation effect. All right, let's remove these. And now I'm going to show you a special pair of filters. Modal and Resonator each have a bank of 32 fixed frequency filters, but with modulating resonance. We've encountered such filter banks in some other instruments. Now in order to use them, you have to train the filter banks using a sample. It's a bit like the resynthesis, but instead of harmonics, the analysis sets the 32 filter frequencies. Let's use this resonance body sample because it just seems appropriate. And now I'm going to add a resonator. And since you can use external samples, not just the ones in the library, we're going to use a sample of our cat Sam Sam. <laughs> It's a kind of haunting sound. Add an EQ to the filter section to soften the sound a bit. And let's adjust the main ADSR to add some articulation to the sound. Alright, let's remove these. And now I'm going to show you a special pair of filters. Modal and Resonator each have a bank of 32 fixed frequency filters, but with modulating resonance. We've encountered such filter banks in some other instruments. Now in order to use them, you have to train the filter banks using a sample. It's a bit like the resynthesis, but instead of harmonics, the analysis sets the 32 filter frequencies.
Let's use this resonance body sample because it just seems appropriate. And now I'm going to add a resonator. And since you can use external samples, not just the ones in the library, we're going to use a sample of our cat Sam Sam. <laughs> It's a kind of haunting sound. Add an EQ to the filter section to soften the sound a bit. And let's adjust the main ADSR to add some articulation to the sound. And last but not least, we turn our attention to the effects section. There are actually two separate effects buses that run in parallel. Let's bring up effects one. Like the oscillator and filter sections, we can add modules. Let's bring up the saturator, a subtle distortion effect. Okay, let's add a phaser. You know I love phasers. And let's bring up the overall sustain in the main ADSR to help bring out the effect. We have several types of reverb. Let's try this one, Shimmer, which pitch shifts some of the reflections. Hmm. 
Lovely. Now let's go to effects 2. Any effects we put on here will run in parallel to the effects in bus 1. Let's add a delay. I really like the way the delay plays off the other effects. Let's get a little adventurous and bring in the granular delay. And of course the effects can be placed in any order, so why not put a resonator after a shimmer reverb? Ah, quite beautiful, I would say. As you can see, this is a very powerful and versatile synthesizer with a ton of features. I hope this tutorial has helped you understand most of them at least a little bit. Now let's see what some of the pros have been able to do with this instrument by listening to a few of the factory presets.
We hope that you've enjoyed this detailed look at Dawson Myth and have some ideas how to use it in your own music. I know I do. To find out more, please visit the Traction website and check out the description below this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to CatSynth TV 